Howdy partners, it's me, Yosemite Sam, saying welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Geezers with your host, B. Pardo, the founding father of the show, and that crazy wild Bill the Unknown Comic. I'm going to kick it on over to Pete now. Y'all stay tuned now. Don't you go nowhere, you hear? Else I have to track you down. You don't want that now, do you? That's all, folks. Uh, so today, uh, by request, we had some folks asking us for uh, Western comics. Neither one of us really has a lot of Western comics. However, there is one character that I have every issue of, and I actually like this character. I don't know if I'd so much call him a Western, but it's uh, more of like a uh, American Indian character. We're talking about Red Wolf, okay? So the the first, to my knowledge, uh, either of the big publishing companies, uh, first Native American superhero or hero character. He's not really super. Um, and he first uh, debuted in issue number 80 of The Avengers, in 1970, and then they gave him his own spotlight in Marvel Spotlight. But he never was one. he ever in Kid Cult or Outlaw Kid? Not that I know of. No, <laughs> not that I know of. But uh, yeah, he didn't really interact with all the other West. I mean, because they had all the Marvel had all these Western characters. And I had one issue. Yeah, I bought Knight Rider. Knight Rider, yes. Which was the Ghost Rider. The white guy on the white horse. And then they, they called him Ghost Rider. Yeah, in the like, 60s. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was the Two Gun then they Kid. Then Night Rider. So let's see if we can name all the different ones. Two Gun Kid was the Outlaw Kid. Yep. Kid Cult. Kid Cult. I have like one or two issues of some of these. Was there a somewhere. Rawhide Kid? Raw, yeah, Rawhide Kid, I think. Yeah. So there was a bunch of them. Kid Cult, Rawhide Kid, Outlaw. There wasn't there the Outlaw Kid or something? The Outlaw Out Kid, yep. Yep. So there's a whole bunch of them, uh, Western comics. But uh, So Red Wolf was kind of like an extension of that. But uh, uh, Marvel Spotlight number one featured Red Wolf. And again, Marvel Spotlight was one of those uh, publications that Marvel did where... Debut a character. Debut a character, or in this case, bring back a character from the two-issue run in the Avengers to see how it takes off on its own. People liked Marvel Spotlight number one enough to for them to give Red Wolf his own issue, and this is uh, issue number one. So again, you know, kind of the um, the history of this character very similar in a weird way to kind of like the Black Panther, how you have this like mythical Black Panther figure, the mythical Red Wolf character, where. Uh, certain members of a tribe, the Indian tribe, or in the case of Black Panther, the Wakandan tribe, right, get, uh, they get become like kind of possessed with the power of the, you know, the historic character in this instance, the, the Red spirit. Wolf. The spirit. Yeah, that's, that's the, the word spirit of Red Wolf. Spirit of Red Wolf. Uh, he has his trusty Red Wolf called Lobo. So it's kind of like the um, uh, Kazar and, 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 and Zubu. And the, the Sabertooth Tiger. Right, yeah, Zubu, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, Zubu, right? Zubu, the Sabertooth Tiger. I don't remember. Yeah, that. Zubu. Yeah, whatever. Um, so it's kind of similar, but no real super, super human powers. Uh, again, really good fighter, master of a lot of weapons and things like that. So, But they make a good team. And they really, uh, they go after, like, again, this is the Wild West stuff. So they go after, like, the the evil gunmen. You the know, train the, robbers. The, the, the train robbers and all that sort of thing. But, you know, Mass Avenger of the Western Plains, that pretty much sums it up. So, and of course, he's just got, like, a knife and a tomahawk and a spear and all that that sort of thing. Pretty cool stuff. The artwork is good. Um, it's an enjoyable read. Uh, here we have issue number two. And how many issues did it go? So it, it actually only ran nine issues. All right, bi monthly, most likely. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. All so right. this is what July. This came out in May. Yeah, exactly. Bi monthly. Okay. Um, fun stuff, but of course the original half of the series took place back in like the old cowboy days, right? Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. So, but there there was a little twist on that, which you'll see in a couple minutes. So bring them into the future, like Frankenstein. Time. They do bring them into the future, yeah. Uh, and that's that, what it all gets all... Yeah, it got a little weird then, yeah, exactly. And that's that was kind of the downfall of the whole thing. But here is issue number three. Uh, again, good artwork, good covers. Uh, here he's kind of battling... Um, the man bear. So we got the man wolf. Now we got the man cover. bear. Yeah, this and is and you got your cool. nice banner page down below. Absolutely, the banner. Yep, the yep. wrath of the man bear. So this is pretty cool. Uh, here he's going against uh, fast John Silver, not long John Silver, but fast John Silver for issue number five. So here for those of you who like not the to gunslingers, be confused with Kid Cult or that, Outlaw Kid. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yep. So for all you gunslinger fans, there you have. Uh, he's going against one of the uh, you know the bad guys, so to speak. And then here. Um, 
going against the Devil Rider, not the Ghost Rider, but the Devil Rider. From That's a cool six. looking cover. Yeah, now th these are all very enjoyable, good artwork, decent stories. Again, something really different. I think Marvel was looking to do something different. So with issue six, this was the end of the Red Wolf back in the 1800s. 1800s. And then all of a sudden for issue seven... Because sales are tanking. He's now set in the Holocaust of today on the skyscrapers and whatnot. And probably not the best thing to do. Um, because this character just does not belong in modern day. And now here, issue number eight, he's fighting like a motorcycle gang. Ah. Uh. Yeah, it, it got a little hokey at this point. Uh, and then, you know, probably one of the coolest covers Maybe this here. is a parody to Billy Jack movies. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. That's a good point. Good yeah. point. Um, and then here, the final issue, number nine. So this book just was not selling well. Uh, cool for me to cover on this. Um, Who's that, Red Wolf? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it says Red Wolf. Red Wolf, yeah. So maybe, maybe this is the original spirit of the original Red Wolf, right? Yeah. Um, but a cool character, you know. He, uh, you, you didn't see him that that often without the, uh, without the red wolf mask. You did see him on occasion, but uh, but yeah, always with uh, Lobo, his trusted wolf by his side. On paper, it should have worked really, really well. But I, you know, Marvel was trying really hard to make some of these kind of like offbeat characters work, and it didn't always work. And I think bringing him into the the, the, the current future day and age was his doom. That yeah, that just didn't make sense. You know, but granted. When uh, when he met up with the Avengers, the Avengers actually kind of went back in time for that whole thing. They went back to the wild, wild west days. So it just it just made sense to leave him there. But I think by this was what nineteen twenty cents is about nineteen seventy two seventy three. Seventy three. Right? Uh, yep. You know, I mean, how many people are interested in westerns in nineteen seventy three? Well, it was still that was a major source of material for Hollywood. Still, from movies in the fifties and sixties, cowboys and Indians was still a big thing. Yeah. We're starting to change. But maybe not as much as the 70s, right? It was dying in the 70s, but they didn't know it yet. Yeah. yeah. That's what happened. And so the same thing happened here. And I think after Red Wolf kind of went away, did we see any other... I don't think we saw any other Western comics like after like the early 70s. I don't remember any of those Rawhide Kid, Two Gun Kid. They, they were the only ones that hung in there because they did like 200 issue runs, but they started like in the 50s or the 60s, yeah. those books. Yeah, Right, Because all those books in the 70s, they're, like, they're all numbered in the 100s. Yeah. Right? They're high numbers. Yeah. So... So I don't know, but uh, but yeah, I was honestly I was never a huge Western comic fan. I had some here and there. I got I rid of one. Any. None. Yeah. Uh, all I have is my Buffalo Bill comic, Classic <laughs> yeah, Illustrated. That's 1953. <laughs> I know. You only have that for a reason because it's yeah. so damn old, right? Yeah. And it's about Buffalo Bill. It's this really. It's his real life. It's like a biography. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's yeah. not really a comic book, fantasy stories yeah. kind of stuff. So anyway. So there you have it, a little Red Wolf, uh, a little bit of Western stuff here, uh, the first Native American hero from Marvel Comics. and uh, Our first oh, Western comic book video, and probably our last. And probably our last, yes. Unless Kirk's got like a whole bunch up his sleeve, which he, hasn't he told probably us. does, yeah, yeah. Know, so we'll see. But uh, we will ask him, because uh, yeah. you know, I think, you know, some of the old Rawhide and Two-Gun Kid stuff, of that, that, you know, it's got its place, and I know people love that stuff, and uh, I just don't have, you know. Other than, I just uh, never collected them, yeah. you know. So Anyway, gang, I'm Wild Bill, as always, saying thanks for being here. Thank you for your support. Click the like button, please, and click the notification bell, so you can be kept in the loop every time we got a new video. Stay tuned for more stuff. As always, we thanks for your, for your support and your comments, and we'll see you real soon. That's right. And I am Pete. Thanks for watching. And if you're interested in getting a uh, Comic Book Geezers t-shirt with the, uh, you know. The Wood logo. The wood logo. The Adventures of Wood. It's the also Adventures on a coffee mug. It's also on a coffee mug as well. So just go to the link below in the video's description. Go to the CH Rank Quality merch page. Scroll all the way down. There you'll see the Comic Book Geezers stuff. Uh, the shirt is really cool. Yeah, yeah. I hope you'll right. like it if you got it already. Yes. And, uh. One other thing, I suggest you buy as many wood mugs as you can. Yeah, if you drink, you know, if you're coffee or tea drinker, hey, you know, why not wake up with your coffee and your tea and wake up with wood as well? So. There you go. <laughs> you heard it here, guys. That's right. So thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon with another edition of the show. In the meantime, if you haven't checked out some Red Wolf, go right to it. I am Pete for Wild Bill. See you guys real Take soon. Take it easy. Bye.